Well, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. I am Nick here with Ryan and Ty. What's up? All right, it's time that we rage again. Now, obviously, it's been a long time, but something that reminded me was a video that you showed us. And that was a video of a compilation of reactions to Bulls on Parade. Correct. And we were in it. We made the cut. And we thought that was pretty cool. So I just thought we should give a shout out and a thank you to Derek Brooks for including us in that video. So please go support his channel. The name of the channel, in fact, is Derek Brooks. He makes compilations of reaction videos. So thank you, Derek, once again. So we have reacted to Testify and Bulls on Parade, which are two Rage classics. I have listened to those songs. Couldn't even tell you how many times. <laughs> it's probably in the thousands. But we have not touched base on the first album yet. So I just thought it was time we had to get to it. And I thought, hey, let's start at the beginning like we have done with many bands. First track. Today's song is Bomb Track. Now, this is not one of the massive Rage hits that everybody in the world knows, but it was a hit, and it was actually the third single released from this album. The song refers to Rage's political views regarding the Revolutionary War against the oppressive U.S. government officials and Abimel Guzman, who was the leader of the Shining Path organization in Peru. Guzman was imprisoned, and the song reflects on the moral wrongs and how the Peruvian natives have been treated. The song's most notable appearance outside of the music industry would be its appearance in Oliver Stone's controversial Universal film Natural Born Killers. I have not seen that movie. I have heard of that movie though, and I heard it's uh, pretty different. <laughs> I have not heard of it. So if you guys know anything about it, let us know if we should watch it. This is from the self titled debut album released in 1992. The album cover features a crop of Malcolm Brown's famous photograph of the self immolation of a Vietnamese Buddhist monk in Saigon in 1963. The monk was protesting the president's administration for oppressing the Buddhist religion. The photograph drew international attention and persuaded U.S. President John F. Kennedy to withdraw support for their government. In 1963, Brown's coverage of the event earned the World Press Photo of the Year Award. So it's an extremely powerful photo and a powerful story. And for those reasons, it's one of my personal favorite album covers. In the sleeve notes to this album, there is a statement that reads, no samples, keyboards, or synthesizers used in the making of this record. So I have heard every single Raid song. Ryan has only heard the two we've done. That's right. Uh, I don't think you have heard this one. No, I've only heard the hits. Yeah, this is the beginning. First track on the first album, and this album went triple platinum. So we're back to Rage. Rage Against the Machine, bomb track. <laughs> Slide at the end when it goes one, 
to mm, that is fire right there. They just get you hype. They're like the ultimate hype man. I feel like I should be boxing. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe hitting someone with a chair. Oh my gosh. But the fact that they have no sampling in their music just really gives this an organic sound. I have said that before. And it's funny to me how this is the first ever track. And the way Zach comes in, it's like he's been doing this for yeah. years. Yeah. He's like, hey, yo, it's just another bomb track. It's yeah, he like, sounds the exact same as any other song I've heard him. Yeah. Shit's like, I guess a good thing. He stuck to his guns. I imagine when people first heard this, it's like, why is this dude rap? Like, you don't rap over this type yeah. of music. I've always admired his confidence. I mean, he just has an amazing stage presence. And you can tell that his rap style here is more closer to like an 80s style, I think, than what was to come later. When that guitar and bass break and you just hear the bass pedal along with the lyrics when it goes, that is fire right there, boy. And I'm always going to show my love for Tom Morello. I mean, we love us some Tom Morello. <laughs> A.K.A. DJ. Because he's over there scratching, you know, that's what he does. He scratches those yeah. strings. Those are not turntables, right? Yeah. It's just a guitar. I saw him live a few years ago. It was just him, you know, and his band that he has now. The first couple songs, he was playing his songs. It was cool. You know, everybody was head bobbing. And then he started playing the intro to this song. Oh, really? Dun, 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 dun. And you can just tell that a storm <laughs> was brewing. <laughs> and when the riff came in... Da, da, da. Chaos ensued. I mean, people were just, it, it was a moshing throughout the entire crowd. It was a moshing. And yeah. uh, our friend Matt was with me. Oh, baby. And that was like the first time he's ever been to a music festival. And when that dropped, uh, I think it kind of shell shocked him. <laughs> <laughs> because everybody was just doing this. There's nothing you can do at that point to stop. No, no. Once you hear it. You've already unleashed the demons. But it just goes to show you that even with one member, on stage. They get you in a frenzy like no other. I have to slide back to the guitar slide. That guitar slide. Double slide. Is absolutely Double fire. slide, yeah. Tom Morello can do no wrong, though. Burn, burn, They burned it down. Don't yeah. you know everything? Da, na, na. The lyrics are ashes now. What an introduction. Just a backbreaker of a song. And I will say, this isn't even the best mix of this. You know, I just wanted to do the video because the audience likes the video. You guys always tell us, well, why do you do the video? Okay, fine, we'll do the video. <laughs> yeah. The original mix is actually louder than this. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. To me, it's one of those songs that are kind of perfect for a workout. And that's a lot of their music, but especially this, considering how many times they say burn. Yeah. Those so actually was a burn, burn. Yeah, so burn those, those yeah. calories. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're just on the, uh, what would you call that? Like, <laughs> what, 
What am I doing? Right yeah, now? what are you doing? <laughs> what machine is this? I don't know what that is. <laughs> what machine is this? What yeah, are you, what are you, you're on the, you know, he's on that uh, the elliptical. No, he's on that right. pony in the front of Kroger when yeah. he's rocking. <laughs> <laughs> One cent. Yeah. <laughs> no, but when I hear it burn that many times, it's like, yes, I, I think I will burn some calories today. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rage. It's not a top Rage track for me. I mean, you can kind of tell this is more of a raw, you know, a style, even for them. Like, they're already raw, but this is even... Yeah. You, know, you can just tell that this is older. I think it's still a banger, though. For me, Rage... I think almost every song is on the playlist, so... You know, it's not like this song is super dynamic or anything, but it still hits. It still hits, and that's all that matters to me. Yeah, I love the bass. Every song I hear from them, I love the bass, because the bass is so much deeper and heavier and more pro profound. The way it's tuned yeah, exactly. is perfect. It's, and, it, and it always mirrors the guitar. You know, they, they just bunch them up together, and they just... Dun, 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 you know, it's not like... Just makes it big. Yeah, sometimes the bass gets lost in some songs, and... They make sure the bass is not lost. They make sure you can hear it. Yeah, for sure. That's for and sure. that I always appreciate. Yeah. I still think the the rapping aspect, aspect is like really unique to me. Yeah. I think that's, I don't think anyone else ever attempted yeah. that. Right. And became probably as popular as they have. Another thing is like, at Harline, after Harline. Hard, hard, line, line, hard line, line, after hard yeah, line. That's, that's my favorite line <laughs> yeah. in the whole song. <laughs> that's a hard line. I don't know if they were the first to incorporate hip hop and metal. There might have been some band that really didn't make it that yeah. was trying this before, but they are the ones who popularized it. I mean, there, there's no denying that. And mastered it. Exactly. And I love the confidence in him, man. He just know that he's he was meant for this. I'm pretty sure every song's going to be like that, so I'm ready to yeah. hear every song now. He I brings just, the heat. Yeah. yeah. I just, the entire band, just always so full of energy. I think the overall purpose of this band is that they try to send a message. You know, it's not about creating a groove or a vibe. It's not about complex musicality. It's just about sending a message. And I think that message gets across to all types of people, even though I think it's a, to a different degree. Their music speaks to me. I know that. I love Rage Against the Machine. They are memorable. I can say that. that. You will not forget Rage once you hear a Rage song. So give us some more suggestions. We're just getting started. We have yet to do my favorite song. Tip of the Iceberg. Yeah, Tip we're going to get iceberg. to it. Oh, you know it. That's it, guys. Don't forget to drop a like. And as always, please tell us your views. Thank you for subscribing and clicking that bell. Peace, Peace out. out. Thank you for subscribing. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I was out of my rhythm, that's why.